Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today we are troubleshooting a garbage disposal. This is a new property that I just purchased, and the disposal is not working. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how I approach these problems, and starting with the easiest, the least amount of time, no cost, and progressing up to possibly needing to change the disposal, which is still a very approachable project. So let's start with step one. Okay, for step one, we wanna make sure we have power. So the disposal here is plugged into the top outlet. There is a chance that your outlet could be used for both a dishwasher and also the garbage disposal. So the switch on the wall might only control one of those outlets and the other would have power all the time. So what I'm gonna use is a voltage tester with the wall switch in the on position. I'm gonna confirm that I have power at the outlet, and I do. So now we know at least we have power here at the outlet, so I'll plug the garbage disposal back in. Step two, these garbage disposals have a circuit breaker built in, and it's right here, this little red square that's sticking out from the bottom. Because it's sticking out, that indicates that it's tripped. So it actually needs to be pushed back in. Okay, so you heard it got power to the motor. The motor could not turn, so that was that humming or whining noise. And then it usually tries for five to 10 seconds, and then that circuit breaker again broke the circuit so it didn't create too much heat and cause an issue like a fire. So we need to figure out why is this motor not turning, which is the next step. Okay, next we're gonna try to manually turn the motor to see if we can't free it up or find out what is binding up the motor. So there is a hole on the bottom and possibly you have this Allen wrench sitting in your sink base, which is specifically designed to fit in to the hole and then that gives you a direct line to the motor for which you can use to try to turn it. Now this should turn fairly easily. Let me try this one. Okay, this guy is definitely not easy. Now try to hold on to the base too when you do this. You don't want to rip out your P-trap. Good Lord. This one is not turning. Hooey. So there is a possibility, like I said, with this being a new property to me, that this has not turned in years, uh, which might also be your scenario. So because I can't get this to turn, I do wanna take a look at the inside, at least down from the top of this garbage disposal. So to do that, I'm going to remove it from the sink. Okay, so now with the garbage disposal unplugged from the outlet, I'm just gonna remove this P-trap which will then disconnect me from the main drain line. There is also a possibility up at the top of the garbage disposal that you have a flexible rubber or plastic line coming in, and that is most likely coming from your dishwasher, which you will need to remove. And in my case, I don't have it connected. It's good to have some type of Tupperware or something to catch the water as you take this pee trap off as well. And I will warn you, sometimes there is some grimy stuff hiding in these pee traps. So you might want to have some gloves on. And if you want, you can also remove the nuts and just set those off to the side. Now, removing the disposal is pretty easy because of the collar that's connected to your sink drain. The, all you have to really do is rotate the unit and it will pop right off. Okay, so now I got the disposal up in the sink so we can get a good look down in it. So you'll remove this seal here to look down. And holy lord, wow. 
Can you guys see that? So hopefully yours is not that rusted. Look at that. It's got massive holes rusted through the plate. So probably goes without saying this is not salvageable. Hopefully yours looks much better. The blades are actually on the outside. So they're on the outside wall. And then that plate grinds the food out towards the outside wall. And that's what actually breaks everything up and puts it down through the drain. This thing, this thing probably hasn't ran for a decade. I mean, for it to rust over like that, that is freaking amazing. Okay, so if you guys have a good looking, not like this, a good looking disposal, you can look down in and see possibly there is a bone, there is silverware, there is something that would be trapped down in between the sidewall and this internal plate. If you do see something and you can remove it, that is what's binding up. That would be binding up, that would be causing that humming noise. You can remove it, reinstall this, and then it should spin and you should be back in business. For my case, I gotta go get a new one and then I will show you how to reinstall that. All right, so about 15 minutes and 100 bucks later, and I'm back with the replacement. I only went with the third horsepower because I'm not looking to put a ton of stuff down the drain and smash it up. No T-bones, no bones, no, nothing like that. Just vegetables, those type of things to break it up before it goes down the drain. So you have about everything you need in, the, in these kits, except they will get you if you didn't remember to keep your old unit so you can swap out the power cord. If you didn't, uh, you do need to grab that power cord before you leave the big box store or uh, if you're ordering online, grab that. And that's, that's where they get you. It's like 12 to 15 bucks for a power cord. So I do need to swap that out. I'm going to open this up and show you how to wire that in. And if you guys want to see exactly this product and some of those other supporting, like the wrench to turn at the bottom, the power cord, look down in the description of this video and you'll see all those links. All right, first up for me is I'm going to install the elbow coming off. So I'll go gasket. So you can see a gasket will go between the elbow and the disposal. Put that in there and then the collar will then hold that in place with two bolts. Now, one thing to note, a few things here. Uh, if you are using the dishwasher, which I am not, you do need to, there is a plug in here that you need to knock out and then pull out from inside so the water will have an open path. Right now, it is not open, so if you're not using it, there's not a leak point there. So if you're using for the dishwasher and that's where it's draining, make sure you knock that out. Also, uh, just a, for this wrench for future use, you can use that to either take off or to tighten when you install to the adapter to your sink. So just another tip there. Let me install the elbow now. Okay, so now moving on, I'm going to swap over the power cord from the old disposal to the new one. Okay, should be easy enough. Now I'm just going to undo the wire nuts, undo the grounding screw, and then take off the strain release as well to fully remove the power cable. Now you will want to inspect the wire, especially if it's an older one like this. And you can see my gr it's a ground, right? So just with the insulation frayed, that's not a huge deal. But I'll probably trim these up and then restrip them just to start fresh because I do have plenty of cord length.
Okay, first I'll put the strain release over the wire before threading it in. And that should just make it a little bit easier to get these wires through so you can have access to them. So I'll just pull those wires through the opening with plenty of slack. And then I'll thread this, this in. Just want to make sure that there's plenty of insulation here on the cord. So it makes a easily grip, a easy gripping surface without damaging the wires. So now it should be easy enough and I'm going to start with the grounding wire. Okay, so now with a good ground, we'll move on to the hot side. So black wire to black wire. And you can pre-twist these if you want. We'll help get your wire nut started. All right, so you should feel those wires wanting to twist around each other. And then you should do a pull test to make sure they're both seated within the wire nut. Okay, and now our common. Again, doing a pull test. Okay, with the wiring complete, now we just need to put on the access door. So now we're good to go from the electrical side. Now let's get this installed, connect it up to the plumbing and test it out. Okay, so now we're back under the sink and ready to reinstall. I did keep the adapter in place. It was in good condition and not leaking. If that's not your case, you want to install the new adapter and you will need some plumber's putty, which is going to give you that nice seal between the sink surface and the adapter. If you don't know what plumber's putty is, that's okay. Look down in the description. You'll see a link for some. Okay, so first... Let's install this guy to the adapter. So you want to make sure your elbow is roughly in the location where we'll connect the P-trap. And you want, there's three different sides that you'll want to make sure are all connected together, not just two or you're going to cause some issues. I'm not going to fully tighten this yet because I want to make sure that my elbow is properly adjusted for the P-trap. Okay, so now I'll reinstall the P-trap. Remember, we took this nut off the elbow before, and you want to make sure with this compression ring that you have the pointed side down. So go nut first, then compression ring. Another way to look at it, the fatter side is up, skinnier side down. That's what we're going to thread into the longer side of the P-trap. Okay, just get it snug, not tight. And then line that up to the other side. So just make sure nothing's binding and everything's lined up as good as you can. Then we'll tighten these down. Okay, that's in a good spot. So again, we'll use that Allen key and tighten the disposal to the adapter. And you wanna go all the way till it hits the stops. 
So now before actually plugging this in and testing it out, I want to run some water through it to make sure that I don't have leaks at the adapter or leaks within my P-trap or my elbow. So really just as long as your sink base is dry, you're just looking for any drips to start dripping on the sink base, which would indicate that you have maybe a nut loose or some other issue where it's not sealing correctly. But from my side, everything looks good. So now the moment of truth. Make sure that your switch is in the off position, then we'll plug it into the outlet. Okay, with it plugged in, now go ahead and flip your switch. Nice, okay. Now we're good to go, everything's back in business, no leaks, and we have a disposal that's working properly. So hopefully the troubleshooting and the install helped you out on your specific issue. If not, I do encourage you to jump down in the comments and let me know what's going on. I'm in there on a daily basis and happy to help. If you wanna really dive deep, we do have a Facebook group called Everyday Home Repairs Community where you can post pictures and videos which we'll be able to use to really troubleshoot your own scenario. Remember, down in the description, you'll find links to everything from the voltage tester we used to the disposal we installed. And if you like these sort of videos, if this is helping you out, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have weekly videos coming out to help you with your repairs around the house and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.